play it first on Xbox One with EA Access. What's going on guys and girls, it's Ghost Robo and Boom Baby, a brand new Battlefield has been revealed. Battlefield 1, yes they're calling it Battlefield 1, takes place in World War 1 and will be releasing this October 21st for Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. Today EA and DICE came out with a brand new trailer uh, that is more of a cinematic sizzle reel but does have hints at gameplay and a whole lot of info. Plus, they released press releases and uh, more documents that drop intel on this upcoming game. So we will talk through those and give you my thoughts. Uh, first off, the most notable thing is how this differs from Call of Duty, but I don't want to get caught up there. They are two different games, uh, and while they will go head-to-head -head in many ways, uh, they both, I think, have their own merits, and they both, hopefully, will be great games. Ultimately, we want great games, whether they're set in World War I, outer space, or somewhere in between. Great games, really, that is what matters most, and that is what climbs above setting and place and all the rest. As long as they're great games, then it's good. Uh, so let's not really waste time arguing about which is better. They're very different. And a lot of people think that Battlefield is going back in time uh, to service its fans, but really I think there's something different and possibly bigger at play here. Uh, I think the reason that Battlefield 1 is going World War 1 is because EA has two shooters coming out this fall, and one of them is Super Future, and therefore it would be cannibalistic to have two future games. So while Titanfall 2 handles the giant mechs uh, and tech of the future era, Battlefield 1 will bring us back to a time of biplanes, slowly loaded weapons, and trench warfare, which is a nice, you know, it's a nice change of pace. It is good to have multiple feels, uh, especially from the same publisher. Again, it would be weird if they both were in the future and came out in similar uh, time frames. Now, my guess is that this is releasing October 21st, and Titanfall will be the November game, so interesting there. You know, Battlefield 4 sold a lot, but did have quite a few problems, so are they predicting that Titanfall 2 will be a bigger game, a bigger hit, a better seller than Battlefield? Is that why it's getting the prime Black Friday month, uh, Thanksgiving month, holiday season, shopping, frenzy month launch date? I'm guessing Titanfall 2 drops November and Battlefield 1 October 21st. I mean, you can call anything 1, I guess, because the first Battlefield is just called Battlefield. They could call Call of Duty Call of Duty 1 or Mario 1 or anything because you don't start putting numbers on until it's a sequel. Uh, but there's some interesting stuff here, so let's talk through that. Obviously, a heavy focus on vehicles. We see Zeppelins. We see biplanes. We even see horses, uh, which I thought was pretty cool, in this trailer. Um, there's mustard gas. There are giant, like, spiked bats that people are getting beaten with, even like a shovel and some other strange stuff. Uh, the destruction is going to be a heavy factor. You'll notice it in the tiny clip in the middle of this trailer that seems the most like gameplay, and I would bet is probably taken from the campaign. Um, the destruction here is intuitive destruction. They say, with intuitive destruction, no battle is ever the same. Destroy vehicles big and small and demolish entire buildings, from tiny wooden houses to massive stone forts. Even the grounds on which you're fighting can be blasted apart. Uh, which, if that carries over to single player, is really cool that the levels will dynamically uh, be destroyed based on your playstyle, your positioning, and how the battle unfolds. They've done things with destruction in the past, but it seems like they're taking it to an even higher level here, which is super cool. I mean, graphically, the game looks gorgeous. Most of this stuff is cinematic. It's all in-engine, but most of it is cinematic, so don't judge too much uh, from a in-game graphic standpoint. But that tiny brief clip in the middle um, where there is the mustard gas and they're running through what looks to be a forest and a fort uh, with the destruction and all the explosions, that seems to be the closest we're getting uh, to gameplay. 64-player multiplayer battles. Um, they're saying it's going to be depicting the greatest battles ever known to man, uh, from the Alps to Arabia. War is raging on land, air, and sea as you witness the birth of modern warfare. There's a whole bunch of pre-order packs, um, a whole lot of... Uh, stuff that's going to be unlocked. It's coming first to Xbox One uh, via EA Access. You'll get that on October 18th. And they are going to be partnering with Xbox just as Call of Duty is partnering with PlayStation. So you'll see both Titanfall, I'm guessing, and Battlefield uh, on the Xbox stage, whereas Call of Duty will be on the PlayStation stage. And it'll be interesting because there's four premier shooters and that is Gears of War 4, Titanfall 2, Battlefield 1, and Call of Duty Infinite Warfare that will be debuting uh, this fall. How will they end up? You know, that's a lot of shooter game that all have campaigns and all have multiplayer now. So they're all competing for a very similar audience, even if they are, you know, embedding their own twist uh, within the genre. So you've got Infinite Warfare, which is taking the tried-and-true Call of Duty gameplay and seems to be adding a lot of single-player flexibility. You can 
you know, ascend to the skies and drop back down to the ground. Uh, without load screens, there's going to be some branching missions, some side quests that have loot, a uh, heavy focus on player, uh, you know, creating their own experience in single player, and then obviously the multiplayer uh, that is beloved by many. It has a little bit of risk factor in going future when people did not like that so much in Advanced Warfare. I feel like Black Ops 3 struck a really nice balance, but the fear is that this, uh, you know, retreats back to Advanced Warfare and maybe even further of a step, but I still think it looks cool. I thought some of those space missions uh, revealed in their launch uh, reveal footage was very, very cool, um, and I'm excited to see how that will mess with the traditional formula. Now, Battlefield 1 will be delivering the tried and true FPS experience in a war setting. Um, there is, you know, they talk about we're going to go from tight urban combat in a besieged French city to heavily defended mountain forts in the Italian Alps, frantic combats in the desert of Arabia, uh, fight is infantry or take control of amazing vehicles, tanks, bikes, biplanes, battleships, etc. Um, and that game is going to feel the most, I think, tried and true and, you know, it will tap into nostalgia the most. I was hoping they were going for an alternate uh, reality, World War One, and that seems like that would have been something absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, one reason I love Bioshock is that it is twisting up uh, the, the true history, and I'm not a big fan of the past, whether it's medieval uh, or World War One or what. I'm just it's just not really my favorite. Uh, but I love when they add, you know, something different in there. I love when they do twists, and I love when they do alternate reality. Uh, again, calling back to Bioshock and why I love that game so much. One of the reasons is because it does have this really fun, you know, steampunky alternate feel to it, and I think they could have done that here, and it would have been received even better than it was. And it, it has a great reception so far, this Battlefield 1 trailer. Uh, people seem to be loving it and super excited again for that blast from the past. But I think a an alternate reality, uh, or with some uniqueness, would have really just upped the ante. Uh, but Titanfall 2 is going to kind of hold that slot, because that is a future-based game uh, with seemingly even more future stuff than COD, because you're going all out Titans and mechs, um, and, you know, who knows what they put in there. Um, but... I'm assuming they will go even crazier than Call of Duty based on what we saw sort of in the distance in Titanfall 1. You remember the dinosaurs, uh, the weird creatures and monsters, and the fact that this game uh, is having a single player campaign, the fact that you saw a Titan with a sword, it seems like they're going to go all out, um, you know, more sci-fi, fantasy, anime style there. And then Gears of War 4, you know, again, franchise based with a heavy story focus and character focus uh, with third person combat probably offers the most distinct uh, of the quartet and you know f sits in its own genre uh, pretty much but it'll be interesting to see where they stand uh, by the end of the year you know in terms of sales and player base and longevity I have a feeling if I just had to go with my gut that Titanfall will be the best of the bunch um, I think that studio has a lot of talent I think they made Titanfall 1 pretty darn good given the constraints the time uh, the beginning of the console generation all the things that they had to deal with they delivered a really great game um, but some people will definitely feel like Battlefield is going to be the best. It will have the biggest battles, it will have the most uh, vehicle-based combat, and it will be the uh, the most, you know, relatable for fans of past Call of Duty and past Battlefield games. It's going to the era and the sort of style that seemingly the vocal fans on Twitter want. And that's the thing I want to touch on as well, because, you know, millions and millions of players, something like 20 million people play Call of Duty, and, and you know... A dozen or so play Battlefield, etc., etc. 10 million copies of Titanfall sold. So there's just oodles of people that play these games, and only a small minority uh, of them are vocal on the internet. Heck, even a minority of them are probably on Twitter following along with these trailers, these reveals, uh, all of this stuff. And again, then an even smaller number of them are willing to comment and, and willing to bash. So the fact that you're seeing, oh, this huge negative reception to Call of Duty, or oh, this huge positive reception to... Uh, Battlefield 1, or vice versa, or whatever it may be, remember to take that with a grain of salt, because the actual, quote, fans of the game are far greater in number than what you're witnessing on Twitter or NeoGAF or some YouTube video uh, dislike bar. Uh, so, at the end of the day, these companies are selling to a much larger audience uh, than just the people uh, who take the time to watch the trailers and be heavily invested on Twitter and uh, everywhere else online. Uh, nonetheless, it is interesting to see such different strokes being taken by the two premier FPS franchises. And again, I think Titanfall 2 really is the thing that throws a wrench in this whole equation and almost 
required Battlefield to go back to the past because it would be so weird to have, you know, Battlefield, whatever, Future Space, Ultimate Warfare 5, and Titanfall 2 being in the same boat, catering to the same time frame, the same audience, and almost being, you know, battling each other when they're really on the same uh, team in terms of pushing sales and pushing units. Also, it would have just looked weird at EA's event to have two shooters that seem to be the same, and you would have been like, why are these both being made and coming out at the same time frame? What are they both, you know, here for? Why do we've got, you know, two of them when we could just have one, and, you know, one of the studios could have done something different? I also feel like Titanfall 2 is going to be strong. They've got a lot of confidence in a respawn. Uh, they just got the Star Wars license for a third-person action-adventure game. Uh, Stig announced that uh, on May the 4th. And that shows that they are confident this studio can push out a powerful uh, game and a powerful single player. And so that has me super hopeful for Titanfall 2 because I think the game of the best single player uh, may not end up being the best seller. But for me, it will say a lot about where these franchises uh, are headed and where they decided to put their emphasis and effort. Obviously, multiplayer is the main focus, I think. Uh, for all of them, that's the audience and, the, and the, the segment of gamers that you really want to grab for longevity, for DLC, uh, for positive uh, mind share, and all of that Twitter, web forum, you know, YouTube love. But single player, I don't know, I, I see Titanfall having the best single player, and I see Titanfall being the best ultimate game. Uh, we'll have to see where that all pans out, and this is a Battlefield video, so I am excited to play all the games. Uh, Battlefield 1, even if the name is weird and a little bit cheesy, uh, should be cool. And I like the fact that we're going to get so many different experiences with our shooters this fall. And hopefully there's a few more that haven't even been announced uh, that we'll get even more uh, variety from. Because that's ultimately what you want. If you're going to spend uh, multiple, you know, hundreds of dollars on games, you don't want to play the same thing over and over again. At least I don't want to. Um, and I think a side little bet slash interesting feature slash little weird thing is going to be how the player bases for Battlefield 1 and uh, Modern Warfare 1 Remastered end up panning out. Will a lot of people play Call of Duty 4, even if they don't like Infinite Warfare? Let's say they are one of those vocal haters on Twitter. Will they buy the game just for Modern Warfare 1? And how will that player base and those numbers pan out uh, in comparison to Battlefield 1. And so when you think about it that way, there's actually five major shooters that are going to be competing for people's multiplayer time, and, and I just wonder if that's too many. So some of these are inevitably not going to do as well as they'd hope, and some are going to do absolutely fantastic. We'll find out which ones as we see more and play more. But remember, nobody has played these games, so to judge prematurely is a little bit silly. Uh, no one has played them, really. So we all are in the same boat, waiting to see more and hoping that they're all great. So that is where I leave you. Thank you guys and girls so much. Let me know your thoughts on Battlefield 1 in the comments down below. Have a fantastic freaking day. We've got a big fall season ahead of us. I think it's going to be the best this generation has seen yet, so I'm pumped no matter what. Hopefully you are as well. Till that time, though, drink so much, all. Thanks again. I love you, and we'll see you all later.